Welcome everybody to another episode. Vivid Iceland has hit the high seas. We are out in the Westman Islands. Finally, we've waited to do this video for a long time now. So, we're going to get out, do a couple of hikes. Uh, we're also going to keep our eyes open for a few pufflings too, because now is the season for these guys back in the water. So, enough of this. Let's go check out the stuff. Myself and two of my friends made our way to the harbour to catch the ferry to the Westman Islands, but before hopping aboard, I was tipped off to a wooden shipwreck, only a short walk from the ferry terminal. I haven't been able to find much information about this particular wreck, but we suspect it might have been either a fishing or whaling vessel, as there was a huge whalebone right next to the remains of the hull. It was fascinating to walk around and examine the construction of this vessel and imagine what it would have been like to sail the seas around this part of the world in a ship such as this. Uh, yeah, probably not something I'd be very keen on doing, but it surely must have been an adventure. After our short little detour, we made our way back to the harbour to catch the ever-reliable Herjolfur, a hybrid electric diesel boat that makes the regular crossings between the mainland and the Westman Islands. I'll be leaving a link to their website in the description below for anyone who wants to visit the islands as well. The ferry is quite modern and comes equipped with plenty of seating inside and out, as well as a galley to buy some basic food and warm meals. You can also bring your car over to the island, but spaces are limited of course. The journey across the sea takes about 40 minutes in good weather and is quite spectacular when you close in on the tiny archipelago, as you'll soon see. The entrance to the harbour on the main island of Heimei is incredible. Steep mountain cliffs rise out of the ocean and countless seabirds swarm overhead, including the famous puffins. If you look carefully at some of the surrounding islands, you may spot the odd puffin hunting cabin high up on the hillside. Uh, yeah, quite a hassle to get to if you've forgotten something back on the mainland. After disembarking, most people head straight into the city centre to walk around or visit the museums, but we decided to first check out an old Westman Island tradition called Sprangan, which was located on the southern side of the harbour. The idea behind the rope swings was to train the young people to climb the cliffs and harvest the eggs from the nests of the local seabirds in the surrounding area. Not for the faint of heart, but luckily we were given a superb demonstration by a local islander. Now this goes built. I see why. Now, uh, just gonna just gain a little bit of COVID weight. <laughs> Good number to know is 112. <laughs> Not 911, it is 112 here in Iceland. Everybody should know that number. Keys are in the car. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now, guys, this is really hard. <laughs> I just make it look easy. Wow. 
A short stroll around the harbour and the smelly fish processing plant will bring you to Heimakletur, our first hike of the day. This is the giant mountain overlooking the town on your right side as you enter the harbour of Heime. The hike begins with a short walk up a gravel slope where you agree to buy some info about the hike and your first sets of ladders. There are no safety railings or attachment points, so be careful. The trails are quite obvious though, and there are some wooden steps along the way, but uh, yeah, most of it is just dirt, gravel and rocks, with the odd chain thrown in for your convenience. Halfway up the climb, you come across Iceland's oldest cross, carved into the rock face by Irish monks many, many centuries ago. It faces southwest so that the sunlight illuminates it on the winter solstice. There is also a sheep pen at the halfway point. And uh, why is it here? Well, there are sheep that live on this part of the island. Uh, I don't really know why the farmers put them up here, but it must be an interesting place for them to live. After the sheep pen, there are no more ladders to climb, and the rest of the hike up to the top of the hillside is done by following the trails. Up here, you get an unparalleled outlook over the entire town, the other islands and sea stacks that are also scattered all over the surrounding waters. Not to mention all the seabirds, and uh, yes, lots of puffins as well, that are regularly flying around and over your head. At the very top lies a guest book that you can sign yourself into, proving to the world that you made it up here. If you ever visit, see if you can find us. Heading a little further down the hillside, we found a nice place to sit and grab a bite to eat while enjoying the amazing scenery. Drone footage to follow. The ladders are a bit tricky on the way down, but at least the views more than make up for it. After our hike, we walked back to the center of town and came across the local history museum. Entry fee was only a thousand krona, and it showcased a decent selection of events that happened on the island, as well as local life here over the years. Well worth the price of admission. Links to the events that happen uh, in this museum will be in the description. The next hike on our to-do list was the Volcano Eldfeld. The giant pole seen here is a reminder of how much ash came out of this eruption back in 1973, when the volcano threatened to wipe out the tiny settlement on the island. There were virtually no warning signs other than a small flurry of tremors two days before the eruption. Then, in the early hours of January 23rd, a 300 meter fissure opened up on the eastern side of the island, only about a half a kilometer from the city center. The fissure grew quite rapidly and ended up being about two kilometers in length and within two days a hundred meter high spatter cone had formed from the main fissure vent. 
Fortunately, most of the 5,300 inhabitants of the island were safely evacuated to the mainland at the start of the eruption, mainly by boat, except the elderly and infirm which were flown out from the local airport. Early into February, the ash fall had subsided, but the lava flow still persisted and they began their slow march towards the harbour. The concern here was that the lava would block entrance to the harbour and therefore make access to the island quite difficult. A plan was devised to slow or stop the advancing lava by spraying it with cold seawater, which, uh, as it happened, worked quite well. The cooling operation eventually ended in July of that year, and the access to the harbour was saved, and some even say that the uh, submarine lava flows actually made the entrance to the harbour a little bit safer. There is a lot more to this incredible story, for which I'll pop a link into the description. Anyway, up top on the volcano you'll find lots of red stones, as well as heaps of other volcanic rocks and sulphur deposits. Keep your eyes open for tiny warm steam vents dotted around the ridges of this now silent volcano. On our way back down the volcano, we made our way through the 1973 lava field where we came across the remnants of an old steam power generator that the locals installed on the cooling lava field, which they then used to power the town and also supply the houses with hot water. Uh, very eco-friendly, if I do say so myself. Upon exiting the lava fields, you'll end up back at the harbour front and near a traditional wooden church that was donated by Norway to Iceland in the year 2000. This was to commemorate the 1000th year of Christianity coming to the island, and we were also very lucky to catch the ferry coming into port for the second last trip of the day. Also in this area, you can see what's left of the old water tank that was destroyed in the eruption of 73, as well as an old Danish fort which was used to defend the island from raiders. While waiting for our boat ride back to the mainland, we strolled around the town admiring some of the murals and the quirky Puffin Head street signs. Oh, what a day that was. Uh, yeah, we managed to see everything we wanted to well, except for the Pufflings. So I think we're going to have to maybe come back in a few weeks time to have a look for them. But uh, otherwise the hike up to Heimekletur, fantastic. Also checking out the volcano Elbfeld was uh, another highlight there, all those beautiful red rocks. So I'm thinking uh, for sure going back to the Westman Islands, maybe a little bit later on in the year. I'm also considering going in the winter time too, because uh, there's not too many days with snow. But uh, those are the days that I want to go. Maybe, uh, yeah, shoot a little bit out there and, well, see what the island has to offer in the wintertime. Um, other than that, I think I'm going to be signing off for now, but don't forget to check out our website at vividiceland.is. Running all sorts of tours on the glaciers, in addition to our new tours to the volcano on the Reykjanes Peninsula. So, uh, with all that said, we'll see you next time.